Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for simonsystamp.com. Today I'm going to be using the stamp set that's included in the April 2023 card kit. This stamp set is called Poppy Perfection, and I'm going to be creating six cards today, two designs, but they're each going to be colored a little bit differently. Well, not quite all differently. You'll see here in a moment. I'm going to start out by doing a bunch of stamping. Now, when I first started to create this card, I thought I would make just one card. But as I started arranging these stamps inside my Misty stamp positioning tool, I decided, you know what? It would be just as easy to create multiples of the same card. So I have a bunch of these stamps on the door of my Misty, and I'm stamping the images twice in Simus's stamp intense black ink. And I'm using this ink in particular because I plan to use alcohol markers to color the poppies. So I've stamped it twice. And then before going on and finishing the stamping, I'm going to remove that piece of white cardstock and just put in another one. And since the stamps on the door of my Misty have not moved, I can go ahead and stamp a second card. I can stamp all those images twice to get really, really solid black lines remove that and then stamp a third card. So this is how I'm going to be doing most of my stamping today. Um, I'm just going to be repeating where each of these uh, stamps are by keeping it on the door of the Misty. And then when it's time to add on additional images, I'll clean those stamps, remove them from my Misty, and then position the next uh, batch of stamps. So these last three stamps will finish this card design for my first card. I have them positioned so that it kind of fills out some leaves on each side and then it finishes that grading up at the top. So once again, I'm stamping these images twice just so I have a really, really solid line. My ink pad probably needs to be re-inked or repurchased, but stamping twice does the job and gives me a really solid line. So I went ahead and finished all the stamping on the second and third card. And then I'm going to set these aside to dry so that they can uh, dry completely. Now this ink does dry fast, but I did stamp them twice. So before I go into all the coloring, I'm going to set these aside while I work on my second card design. I'm using the stamp and stencil mat, and I'm putting my piece of A2 cardstock in the center of the mat because I'm going to be stamping the poppy images and they're going to bleed off all four sides of my card design. I've placed my first batch of stamps down onto the uh, door of my Misty, and then I'll just do my stamping in that same black ink. Now there's a lot of stamps that I'm stamping all at once, so I'm making sure to press the door of my Misty down really evenly to get a good impression. And even so, I did miss one little area in the center of that flower. So I'll stamp it a second time to get the perfect impression. Now, when I decided to do multiples of this card, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna have to remove that cardstock from this sticky mat. And so I did. I did remove the card from the sticky mat um, to do the second and third uh, duplicates. And then I positioned the stamps and did some additional stamping. But at one point here, I decided, you know what? It would be easier if I just had each one of these, like all three cards on their own sticky mats. And I did have um, some sticky mats from My Sweet Petunia. So I went ahead and I just placed the clear sticky mat over the top. And then I was able to place my card front in the exact same position as the one that's right below it. And I did that with the other two. So now all three card designs are on their own sticky mats and I can uh, stamp one, remove it, and then put a new one into my Misty and continue on with my stamping. So that's exactly what I did. And this made it super, super easy to switch between all three cards. I was, you know, it was super fast to just pull out that entire mat while keeping the card on the sticky mat and then move on to the next one. And this was especially helpful um, when after I finish this batch of stamping that's on screen right now, I'm actually going to remove 
the cardstock from each sticky mat and I'm going to move it to the bottom. And that's so that I can have some of the taller stamps come off the top edge. There just wasn't enough room in the Misty when it was in the center to have those stamps. In fact, that tallest stamp actually touches a little bit of the ruler on the edge of the Misty, but it's okay. I didn't ink up that area and um, I just focused on putting pressure in the center of the misty door and everything turned out just fine. So I continued on with all of my stamping, making sure to give it a really even impression. And I wanted to just fill this entire space and make sure that, um, you know, there weren't any big, huge gaps in the design. So I used those clear mats just to place over the top and get those pieces of cardstock in the right place. And then I was able to remove the original design that had the new stamping on it and continue stamping those images. Super fast and easy. I think I'm going to remember this uh, particular mass produce card technique where everything's on its own sticky mat. I'm going to try to do that with Christmas cards this year. I don't know about all of you, but of all the cards that I mass produce, I mostly mass produce holiday cards or birthday cards, one or the other. So either one of those, I'm going to remember this particular technique of using separate sticky mats and the, my sweet petunia sticky mats actually come in a set of three. So it'll be really, really convenient. And you could probably fit uh, two card fronts on one sticky mat without much problem. So it'd be really easy to do that. So after I finished all of my stamping, um, I then removed um, all of the cardstock from the sticky mats. And I moved on to a greeting for those cards. Since I filled the entire card front with those images, I needed to have a separate greeting. So I have three strips of hero arts, pitch black cardstock that I've cut to two and a half inches wide by one inch tall. And I'm stamping the love and hugs greeting from the stamp set. I did prep each piece of cardstock with an anti-static powder tool and then stamped the greeting in Versamark and coated it in some white embossing powder. This is alabaster embossing, embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. I heat set each one of those until they were smooth and melted and then set them aside while I do all my coloring. So for this card design, I'm going to have all three cards be exactly the same the same colors and everything. So I first started by coloring all of the leaves and stems with YG63 Copic marker. And then I used YG67 to bring in just some bits of darker green. I didn't bother blending these out really well since the leaves and stems were such a small portion of the card design. So I'm gonna, you know, for all of my blending time, I'm gonna spend that more on the poppies themselves. So for the poppies, I first colored the entire flower, everything except the center in R05, just a nice flat red. Then I came in with a darker kind of reddish brown. I'm using E19 and adding in some areas of shadow. I'm not going to do really intense shadows. I just want a little bit of a different shade of color to kind of suggest there's shadows on these poppies. So after I did the darker shade, I then came back to that original red color and just color over the darker and it kind of blends it out and softens that line. So it's not such a harsh line of shadow. So I'm going to do the same coloring for the rest of the poppies. I'm going to start out by doing a flat color of this red all over each one of the flowers. And then I'm going to come in and add the shadow areas with the E19. And just like I did on that first flower, I'm then going to switch back to the original red and soften out those shadow lines. The last thing to do is to add the dark centers of the poppies. So I use the color E27 and I just colored that in really messily. I didn't bother doing any particular blending on that. For my other card design, there were a few areas where there were gaps between the stems and leaves and flowers or other areas. So I just used a Copic multi-liner. I used a 0.3 multi-liner just to add in those areas. And the reason why I wanted to use a multi-liner is because 
um, this ink and this marker is meant for use with Copic markers or alcohol markers. So they'll be safe to use. I'm using the color W3 to color the background of this first one. And I'm just doing a flat color all around these flowers. I thought it'd be really dramatic to have a plain color. And I thought, why not change it up? So for the second version of this card, I'm using R81. It's just a nice lighter pink. And then I'm going to switch this up and move to a blue shade. And I'm using B91 for the background on this card. After I have the backgrounds completely colored, I went right in and started coloring all of the, the leaves and stems and also the poppies. So I'm going to use the same colors I used on that first card design. Started out with a lighter green, brought in the darker green for shading, and then coloring each one of these poppies all the same red, just a nice flat color, and then coming back in with the darker red shade for some shading. When I do lots of coloring like this, um, I like to try to keep the coloring as simple as possible just to make it a little bit faster to get through all of these. Now, I mentioned doing Christmas cards earlier, and if you were to kind of translate this particular method of doing multiple cards over to a Christmas card, you might stamp poinsettias or, um, or any other like Christmas foliage, uh, ivy and, and berries and things like that. And it would be really, really pretty to have a, a plain background color and then let those flowers really pop on top. I think it could, would look great. And it would be a very similar method for a card like that as this one. I'm now going to use the color stone ink from Simus stamp just to bring in a little bit of a uh, dramatic blending on the bottom of these cards. So I'm blending it from the bottom right over that coloring and I'm making sure to concentrate most of the color at the very bottom of the card. And I did the same exact blending for all three of these duplicate cards. When it comes to the other three cards, the, the ones that have different colored backgrounds, I'm going to use different colors of ink for their blending. For the tan one, I'm using the color Sparrow and I'm bringing that in right on the edges. Um, I really wanted a dramatic edge on these. I thought the flat color was really nice looking, but just to have a little bit of that blend, I think it looks a little bit more sophisticated and um, kind of disguises the very, very simple coloring. For the blue background, I used some soft navy, and that just uh, intensifies the borders on this card. I think it really makes it dramatic and looks really, really sophisticated. So for the pink one, I'm actually going to um, choose a much darker color. Um, and this is one of my most favorite dark reds, which is the color Merlot. I love this ink color. It's been out for ages and I feel like I really slept on it for a long time. I didn't realize what a beautiful shade of red it is especially when it's used for ink blending. When you stamp with it, it's a very, very intense red. It looks really dark and almost black, but when you blend with it, that's when you get the beautiful red shades and it looks so dramatic on this pink background. So now I'm going to assemble my cards. The first thing I did was just adhere that first card design to some folded card bases and that finishes the card. This was super easy to finish up just adhering those. The final three cards need just a little bit more assembly. I'm going to put some tape runner adhesive on the back of each one of these and then adhere it to the card base. And then I put some foam strips behind that stamped and embossed greeting and then press them down onto the card front. Now on the tan background, I put the love and hungs a little bit higher, but then eventually I decided I didn't want it covering up that center poppy so much. So for the blue and pink versions, they're a little bit lower. So those are the cards for today. Uh, this stamp set is included in the April 2023 card kit from Simon Says Stamp. So you can pick up the stamp set on its own or in the card kit. Either way, it's really great. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the inspiration today. And I hope it encourages you and inspires you to kind of mass produce some colored cards. Thanks for watching today. And I will catch you guys next time.